uh, Prabhu. Okay, we're recording now. Okay, so welcome everyone. My name is Yashaswini and I'm a current PGP student at ISB. Uh, at first, I would like to welcome our panelists, Mr. Shaurya Priyanshu. Uh, Priyanshu, who is an alum of the 2020 batch, and he has been working as the manager of corporate strategy at Y Form 18. Uh, Mr. Mayur Mishra has, is a leading growth subscriber acquisition at Disney Hotstar, and Mr. Sriram Ramachandran he has was a part of the 2011 batch, and he is head programming strategy and insights at Sony Pictures. Um, just to start kick it off, I would like to give an introduction about myself. I was also working in the media space post my undergrad. I for two years I worked with a community journalism platform called Yuki Avas, and then I was also a founding member of the editorial team of Shekhar Gupta's print. Um, and after that, I transitioned into impact consulting. So for all of our participants, I'd really like to say. Um, ISB is a space where a lot of people from the media and entertainment industry come in, for both who were previously a part of it and now who want to get out and work in the sector. And I think we have three stalwarts who can tell us uh, the way forward. Uh, just to start off, may I request, um, uh, Shorya, if you could introduce yourself and just give us a brief background of your experience at ISB. Yeah, so welcome everyone. Um, first of all, congratulations for taking the first step towards ISP. And uh, so about myself, I'm currently working as Yashashwini told you, I'm working in the YCOM 18, uh, which is the one of the leading major media networks in India. And I'm working in the corporate strategy team as a manager here. Uh, while at ISB or previous to ISB, I was never ever kind of uh, had been in the media space ever. So it was the first time when in ISB we had an SIG. I think still we have a club around it. So that's the first time I got introduced to it. And of course, there are a lot of alums in ISB who are working in this space. So I got you know connected to them and I got to know about the kind of work they are doing. And of course, the placement during the placement by com meeting had come. And that was the first time when I was given this opportunity to explain explore this particular sector for the first time. And, and, and it has been a wonderful ride since then. And uh, if you talk about ISB, ISB, I would say it kind of prepares you in a very versatile manner where you get to learn about a lot of stuff which is applicable in different forms and methods across any industry which you go. So uh, for example, when it comes to media, I had no prior knowledge about media before joining the company that I am in right now. Uh, but thanks to the education that I got there, actually, if I talk about my background, I'm primarily coming from a tech background. I was a tech consultant before joining ISP. So mostly you see people from tech consulting background or tech background going back to tech companies as a product manager or some other, other corporate strategy might be another route that people take. So uh, when I was in ISB, it was one of my primary motives that I wanted to explore different industries. I wanted to go out and see what else is there to offer. So that was one of the biggest benefit I get from this particular school that you have so many peers coming in from so many different industries, from so many different sectors who have done so many different kinds of things across their life. You sort of learn from them, you get a lot of knowledge from them, you understand what it takes to become a successful manager in say sports industry or media industry or XYZ, any industry may be. So that, that is a kind of uh, exposure that ISB gives you. I have known a lot of people who were there in my past from journalism or media background who have gone on to do something else in some other uh, industry entirely. So I think that is the best part about the journey in ISB. When I talk about it, I al always tell this thing that it is a platform. It's a kind of a nest from where you can take a leap towards any industry or any sector or any job of your choosing. So that is the advantage that ISB gives you. So I think that's all. Thank you, Shara. Um, Mayuk, if we can understand what your journey pre and post ISB was like for everybody here. <laughs> Hey, hello everyone. So first of all, I'll uh, thank Priyanshu because I think he's just made it easier for all of us because I agree with everything that he said. So plus one to all of the things that he said. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll just uh, talk briefly about my profile. So I've spent close to about six years in media and entertainment now. Uh, this is uh, pre and post ISP and it has been across stints. In my current stint, I am basically working with Disney Plus Hotstar as part of their growth team. I am leading the subscriber acquisition pod. 
uh, very simplistically put, that basically means that uh, I have two objectives. One is to get the premium users on the platform and make them watch more. And second, once they have consumed good fat, ready to you know like move to the next level, we convert them into subs. That is the simplistic objective which we work with. Uh, I think because I had background of media before I joined ISB, so I already like kind of knew about different uh, roles and different opportunities that exist in media entertainment. Uh, because I had worked like close to two three years before I'd be uh, as part of this new staff. Uh, but yes, I do agree with uh, Priyanshu that yes, ISB was a great platform for me to not just know about media entertainment, but just know about other opportunities that existed. And then that helped me in terms of, you know, placing that where I came from, where does it stand with respect to other industries? What are the other opportunities and whether it is the right direction or not? I think the, a lot of those questions got answered. So yeah, I think that is pretty much, I would sum it up in this way. Thank you. And finally, Sriram, I think it's going to be 10 years since you passed out of ISP. And we'd love to know what you thought of how the program helped you, how uh, the industry helped you. So firstly, thank you for making me feel older uh, <laughs> than I anyway feel. Uh, and so firstly, I'll, I, I, I want to apologize because I'm taking this uh, call in transit. I mean, if you stay in Bombay, you spend roughly 60% of your day on the road stuck in traffic somewhere. So I am really sorry about that. Uh, I hope that's not a bother. Uh, so far, it sounds like I can hear what you guys are saying and I hope you guys can hear what I'm saying. Right. Uh, so uh, anyway, so I had this very, so most people end up taking, uh, you know, a corporate job, spending a nine to five or a nine to six or nine to seven uh, job and then saying that I want to do something creative. And then they quit their banking or strategy jobs and then they take up writing and stuff like that. I did the other, I did the opposite, right? I, I, I graduated from a mass media school. I started my career as a writer. Uh, I was on the creative side of things. And then for various funny and strange reasons, I decided to take up, uh, do an MBA from ISB and switch to the, the strategy and the business side of things, right? Uh, and that was, that was because I was always interested in the larger picture. Right. I, I saw that writing was one part of the journey. The creative product is one part of the overall media and entertainment cycle. And I was very keen to be a part of the larger picture. as well. So that's what took me to ISB. I, I specifically went to ISB because it looked like a good fit. It looked like a very non-traditional sort of business school. It looked like the kind of business school that would encourage uh, different people from different backgrounds and it'll open up your minds to a lot of different things rather than a traditional standard issue to your MBA. Right? So I was very clear that I didn't want to do that. And uh, I got into ISB and it was a, obviously a, a great experience for me. It was a very, uh, so I came from media and I went back to media, but ISB for me was a very much, very much of a frog uh, out of the well sort of experience. It just gave me a significantly larger perspective on the business aspect of things in general, right? I came from a creative background, so my view was very limited, but ISB gave me exposure to uh, a huge amount of learning on the business side of things, not just in media, but across the board. Uh, since ISB, I've spent a little over 10 years, uh, almost equally in Star first and then Sony, right? I've, I've been working in various roles involving a mix of business strategy and programming and content strategy. Uh, my years in Star were spent largely in the Hindi general entertainment business and a little bit in a couple of couple of years in sports. Uh, Mayul looks familiar because I believe we have been a part of a couple of meetings in Star Sports together. Uh, so, hi there. Good to catch up again. Uh, since then, I've been, uh, after Star, I moved to Sony. Uh, in Sony, I, I am heading the strategy piece for Sony's uh, kids and animation business. So, it's a combination of uh, a linear television channel, a bunch of YouTube channels, and a production studio, which is producing content for other streaming platforms and so on, right? So uh, that's, yeah, that's a very disorganized way of telling what I've done for the last 10 to 12 years or so. Oh, that, that sounds really interesting. And I think you gave us okay. the perfect segue to my next question, uh, which was um, right now, so we, I'm a part of a lot of clubs. I'm a part of a lot of uh, special interest groups. So we have a very unique way of teaching at ISB where we are very focused on cases and every evening we're running against the clock trying to finish a case before class the next morning. So I'd really like to know what was what were particular things about ISB that helped you 
uh, scale up and make this transition um, into the industry? Like, what were key things that you did? And this is open to uh, all three panelists. So, whoever would like to go first. Sure. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so essentially when you talk about any in uh, any business in any industry, you have to think about a lot of stuff apart from the product that you're giving out. So you have the stakeholders at one end, you have a lot of people who are working in the company whom you have to take care of. So essentially you need to be profitable and you have to run a business overall. So when you are doing that, uh, you need to look at it in a way that you have you have to look at the marketing of it. You have to look at the operations of it. You have to look at how you are going to sell your product. So the, the customer can differ from time to time. For example, in our industry, we at one end, we sell our content to the customers as in like the viewers. And at the other end, we also send out the advertisement space to the different uh, you know, advertisers who will pay us for the advertising space. So all these things, when you look at it, at the basics of it, it's it, it, it's just plain and simple business. Like it's, it's at the end, it's your competitive strategy, it's your marketing, which are the basics of the courses which make up the first three or four terms in ISV. And then, of course, as you go on forward, you take on electives and as per your choosing, you can learn a lot of stuff. So like one of the major things that I do on a regular basis is to look at the financial statements of the different competitors, you know, and, and just to check that are we going in the right direction or create a roadmap for the different business units or the programming units that are there in, in our company or in general, look at the market trends that, okay, what is happening? So I think when you talk about the teachings in ISB, these are the key competencies, which can, like the key competent which you know in ISP can be fitted into any industry in any work that you're doing, like in, 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 in any segment that you're running business. Particularly if you talk about media and entertainment as of now, as of today, you would see that there is a huge uh, sort of disruption going on in media and entertainment industry right now. You know, you have OTT players coming in, which is going on very strong. Uh, the entertainment industry is becoming uh, sort of saying democratized because you don't have a single entity producing the content right now. Any person with a smartphone is a content creator today. And we have a lot of people who are essentially going out and watching these people, like all these, you know, TikToks and all that. TikTok is banned right now, but Instagram Reels and Moj and all these apps are coming up, which are playing a huge, you know, taking up a huge chunk of the entire entertainment industry. So. So therein comes your sort of uh, managerial aspect that as a business strategist or as a content strategist, how would you take your decisions or how would you map your uh, sort of roadmap? How will you create the roadmap for the for your company for the next year or for the next two years? How, how do you envision your company growing as to meet up to all these challenges which are coming in and believe me as of now the challenges in the media industry has like it's a very fast paced industry like it has become a very fast paced industry as of today so rapidly we are seeing some decline in the page ec like people are moving towards free dish or free content people are uh, a huge segment of people are watching a lot of net uh, web series and you're uh, they're consuming a lot of OTTs where movies are getting directly released. So the, these are the things which was never ever imagined maybe five years back. Like no one could have said that, okay, this is the way it was going to play out. So essentially going out and researching and looking at the things, how it is developing and saying that, okay, fine, this is what may be a challenge for our industry going forward. So let's be prepared for it. Let's create a synergy or let's create a strategy around it as to how to how do you address it? How do you ensure that you are making the maximum profit? And how do you at the same time provide entertaining content to your viewers because they are your primary audience. So all these things, when you take all of these things in uh, together, then you see that ISB actually teaches you all about it. So for example, I'll just give you an example. When I was in 2020, NFT was something which was very new. Like it was just something that we people had heard about. Like no one had a clear idea what NFT means. Now it's a big deal. And uh, like my company is going very he heavy in NFT right now. So they are putting a lot of money. So, you know, you need to essentially cater. You need to essentially look at all these perspectives and be prepared for any challenges that might come up. So I remember during my classes in ISV, I had taken a couple of classes or uh, Professor Bhagwan Chaudhary, I think you guys would know him. So he had taken a lot of classes around blockchain, cryptocurrencies and NFTs and how it's going to reshape the world. So 
that was a basic class which was taking talking about the basics of all these things but when you come to the industry and when you see how it is playing out or how it is being implemented in your particular industry it becomes very relevant so that that's where the research based study and that's where the uh, case studies of isv come into picture so that that's all from my side Uh, my Sri Ram, would you like to add anything to that very comprehensive answer? No, I think he's again covered everything. So again, that's all from my. Next time, I think Mayur, you should take up the question first. <laughs> you'll you'll not have to say plus one. Yeah, I speak very like I don't have too much content, unfortunately. Um, I think Sri Ram has um a major thing, right? I mean, yeah, I think sure. But there were uh, to add to what Sri Ram. Right. Pick. Can you hear me? Oh yes, we can now. Hello. Great. Uh, I think I think there is a lack. Uh, for me, there were two major things. Right. The first one was the through the peer group and the professors. Right. Uh, the the diversity that uh, as we brought uh, different backgrounds that they came from the different. Uh, Shiram, I think we're losing you in the middle. We can get bigger. Oh, I think was a short. It just gave you a very, very wide perspective on how to approach different businesses and how to approach different business problems. So I think that to me was one of the biggest takeaways that I got from ISB. Uh, the second thing for me, uh, now coming specifically to media and entertainment, was that our business is a business that needs a great balance of the right brain and the left brain right it's a creative business your product is is content which is not the most uh, tangible or the most scientific of products at all times uh, what isb really helped me do was uh, it it helped me understand how to do strategic thinking right how to be analytical how to understand consumers and how to translate firstly how to figure out consumer behavior and how to translate that consumer behavior into business strategy Right, and how how to turn a creative product into a business product. That is something that ISB really brought to the table. Uh, and those kind of skill sets were something that I really felt are were invaluable for me to take back to the media world, because the media world is is a very is a very creative world. There is there is there is a lot of chaos and there is a lot of intangibility and a lot of magic happens when you are able to bring a little bit of method to the madness. And how to bring this method to the madness, and how to bring a certain amount of scientific thinking to a business or to a content business is is something that I thought I I really, really taught me, you know, how to do. Yeah. And just uh, taking from there, I think if we can speak a little about what are the future trends in media and journalism, like Ashwarya mentioned, NFTs were a big thing. Um, Mayuk, if you can maybe elaborate on that. Um, what should we be looking at as students who are going to go out into the corporate world this year, next year? What are some key trends we should be updated upon? I don't know anything about NFTs, so <laughs> I will not pretend to talk about that at all. Uh, I can just give you like a very brief uh, outline of how we are seeing and how everyone else is seeing media industry evolve. I think there are three or four very key trends that have emerged uh, in the last, let's say, five years, uh, 2018 onwards. I think one of that is one of the things is that India is a very peculiar market. Okay, so if you look at other global markets, there you are clearly seeing a declining trend in the linear. And when I say linear, I mean the linear television that is your broadcast, and it is coming at the cost of. And basically, uh, people are moving from linear to OTT, and OTT is happening at the cost of TV. I think India is slightly different in that manner. That in in India we are we are witnessing growth in both the sectors. So we are seeing that TV is also growing and OTT is also growing. Pace of growth is different, obviously. TV is not growing at the same pace that it was growing 10 years ago. But I think in terms of numbers also, I think there are enough households right now where cable penetration is still not there. So I think as an area, and we have like so many million British homes also that are ready to go to the next level. You know, Some of them could move to OTT, some of them could move to cable. And TV is still aspirational in India. I mean, India is a very unique market that way. So I mean, in media and entertainment particularly, I think all the areas are witnessing growth. You have your TV, you have your broadcast business, your OTT business, the animation, esports. I mean, you name anything, and it is just going off the charts right now. So I think it is a it is a great time to be in media and entertainment, honestly. And now that I've worked in TV as well as in OTT, uh, I can see that how both of them are not actually rivals, but like sort of complement each other. 
you can actually use both these uh, technology, like both these different screens, both these different kinds of content that you are creating. And you can actually create a very companion kind of a model where, you know, one complements the other and not at the cost of the other. And we, you know, we try to do different initiatives and experiments to do that. So uh, it's not like one is better than the other here. I think both of them are doing well. Both TV and OTT are doing well in their own respects. And both of like both of them are like complementing each other, at least now. And we see that happening for the next five to 10 years also. Unless it is something very record breaking, like Geo happened in 2016, happens in 2030, when like everybody, when like data becomes super cheap and all the subscriptions become like, you know, easy to uh, subscribe and people's uh, propensity to pay also goes up. That's like a dramatic shift we're talking about. I think things are going to be uh, really good for both TV and OTT. So it's a good time to be uh, in media entertainment. Um, Sri Ram or Sorya would like, would you like to plus one to that? So, uh... I think uh, what uh, Mayul said is right, right? In India, you're not seeing a transition from television to digital. You're seeing a growth across both. So I think what's good for what is likely to happen going forward or continue to happen going forward is that multi-platform consumption is going to be the key, right? Uh, that's where people are not watching one medium or the other. They're watching everything. So when they are in transit, they're watching stuff on OTT. When they get home, they're watching content on TV because family consumption, dinner time consumption is a very, still a widely prevalent trend in India, right? Uh, uh, Ram, we lost you at family consumption is a widespread trend in India. I think by the time Sriram comes back online, Shorya, would you like to add something? I think pretty much all. Yeah, I think pretty much all was covered by my. Oh, right. We are growing, and you are heading across Sony Live and WhatsApp. But you also had TV numbers growing. Can I... That was a lag. Hi. Hi, we can hear you now. Is this better? Okay, great. No, I was just saying that uh, multi-platform con consumption is basically going to be the key. People are in India in particular going to consume more and more content. The other big trend is I think there's going to be a lot of consolidation. There's just uh, an explosion over the last three, four years. There's been an explosion of content offerings, which is which means there have been at the same time more and more OTT platforms coming into the picture. And you also have new, completely new mediums like uh, Instagram and YouTube Shorts and Insta Reels and uh, such platforms coming into the play, which are all content platforms eventually. And at the same time, you also have more and more TV channels being launched, right? So there's just a massive explosion of content, which I think at some point will start seeing some consolidation. Uh, the Indian consumer is very price conscious. So eventually we will start seeing Perhaps, I mean, we're already seeing that at an, at an industry level. You are seeing a lot of mergers and acquisitions and companies coming together globally and, and in India. I think you're just going to start seeing more and more of that uh, on a platform level as well. I mean, you already have a lot of smaller OTT players streaming through Amazon now. Like you can watch Lionsgate, Eros, etc. through Amazon. You're just probably going to see a lot more of that. Right. Um, sorry, I'm sorry, you got cut off. Yeah, no, I think pretty much all is covered by uh, Sri Ram and Mayu. So uh, I don't think there's nothing, there's anything more to add. So just, just one thing that I think going forward, there is a possibility that there might be a case where we are, instead of just seeing one cable TV going into a household, we might be seeing two, you know, uh, cable inputs, one carrying the regular TV and one carrying the OTT. So this yeah. is something of a future that people are envisioning where, as Sri Ram said, that there will be a huge consolidation happening both in the TV front and in the OTT front. And then uh, the ease of content consumption is going to come in for the viewers so that you can easily go. So right now you have a lot of options, but the content is scattered across different platforms. So maybe something around that is going to happen. That's what people are sort of pointing to it, yeah. That's very insightful. Then, um, so we've spoken about how ISV is and we've spoken about what the industry trends are. So I think we can get to the very big question, how are placement opportunities at ISV about in specifically in the media and entertainment space? What kind of companies come? What kind of uh, skills and profiles are they looking for? Because, and I speak, of it from personal experience you know i am i was also very hesitant before while i was applying to isp thinking 
what can a journalism kid do at a business school? What am I going to bring to the table? So I'd really like to understand, and I'm sure everybody on this call who's tuned in would really want to know a little bit more about placement opportunities in the sector at ISP. And again, it's open to all panelists. Um, I, I'll just say one thing. Uh, media yeah. and entertainment industry loves the uh, ivory drags, by the way. Like you'll find a lot of IP and Sri Ram will agree, even uh, Shari will agree. You'll see a lot of ivory grads in media and entertainment. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. I think we are just building like a, uh, you know, like a faction there where only IC people are welcome. So uh, in terms of welcoming uh, grads from ISB, I think definitely because uh, a lot of alums are sitting at really senior position, like Sri Ram himself, he's like heading content and, you know, programming strategy and that's so people like him are like sitting at senior position and there's always that uh, thing about your fellow alum where you, you know, you always get that thing that, okay, let's try to have an interaction. Let's try to give that person a chance. So, and that happens with every school, It's not just with IT, but I'm saying that because you asked in terms of opportunity, because a lot of alum base is already kind of penetrated being entertainment. So definitely a lot of opportunities and preferences given to ISP. I'm using the word preference. Uh, so that is one bit that, that should kind of give you some comfort that definitely a lot of, of good opportunities will come across your way just by virtue of the fact that you are an ICR. Yeah, so I, I agree with Mayul. There is a growing ISB community in the media and entertainment fraternity. I, I, I think when we joined the industry, there were very few ISB alums. Now there are several of them, which is great uh, to know. Uh, about, about, I, I can't comment too much about what is specifically happening in terms of placement opportunities in ISB right now. So it's been a while since I've gotten out of the college. But what I can tell you is that uh, the media and entertainment industry has grown in its capacity to absorb MBA graduates uh, over the last 8 to 10 years, right? Uh, 10 to 12 years ago, there were barely any roles, uh, not 10 to 12, maybe 15 years ago, there weren't too many roles for forget MBA grads, but for people outside of the, outside of the media business, it mm -hmm. was a very, uh, it, you know, it was a, it was a very self-containing sort of industry where you just had media people moving from one company to the other. That has changed in a very, very big way right now, in part because a lot of companies have grown and expanded. Uh, Star has grown significantly in the last 10 years. Uh, Sony has grown significantly in the last 10 years. Plus a lot of new companies and new age companies in terms of Facebook and YouTube and uh, Netflix and all of that have come in. So as companies have grown, the need for strategic thinking and need for business experts have, has grown. Uh, the industry has shifted to a better balance between creative professionals and business professionals. It was, it was heavily skewed towards creative uh, people, you know, maybe 15 years ago. So just to give you an anecdote, uh, I, I joined Star in 2011, right, uh, in marketing at that point uh, from MBA, straight out of ISB. And I learned that till about two years ago, till about 2009, the marketing team was called publicity, right? Uh, it, there was no marketing team. It's called publicity, which is basically just putting up hoardings. Uh, so if you go back to a, a movie from the 80s or 90s and you see the credits, you will see the term publicity put over there. So that, that's kind of how disorganized uh, it was 15 years ago. That has changed in a very, very big way right now. And you, you have uh, people... Uh, from various business backgrounds coming in. Uh, you have people from very, uh, the other thing that has happened, which has helped, uh, the, you know, ISB grads move into the media industry and create more opportunities for ISB grads than MBA grads in general, is that a lot of people from other industries have also started coming into MLE, right? People from FNCGs have come in, people from tech companies are coming into MLE and they get the value of an MBA grad. So in short, opportunities are huge at this point. I mean, they're much bigger than they were. 15 years ago, and I think they are growing. Yeah. Um, Sharia? Yeah, so again, Sriram, I think he has covered it all. <laughs> so uh, essentially, the same thing I will reiterate that, which Sriram had also said earlier, that there's a huge need, the way the things are moving in m and &E industry right now, there's a huge need to marry the creative thinking with the sort of analytical thinking. And, strategic thinking. So that is something you get from an MBA grad, especially from schools like ISP. And so that's why there is a huge demand for uh, people from ISP or any MBA grad for that matter. And of course, there is a huge amount of technological disruption also happening in m and &E industry. So that also brings in a lot of sort of a need for these kind of an MBA grads to come up and take up the reins and kind of move the company forward. So 
yeah so there is no there is no dearth of there is no uh, you say it in whichever company you will get an opportunity you will have a role which would be requiring an mba or which would be requiring a strategic thinking kind of a background or in in any industry so there, there is a lot so there is nothing to worry about essentially right and a lot of i'm getting audience questions also side by side so a couple of questions that are coming in again and again is how can somebody from the tech world move to entertainment marketing um i know you had a different background not a media background so would you can you shed some light on that yeah so uh, i definitely was coming from a tech background and so can can you repeat he was talking about entertainment marketing is it um yeah Okay, so see, essentially, when you talk about entertainment marketing, in in a very uh, like in a proper sense, when you talk about marketing, it's 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 hugely number driven. It's hugely analytics driven. So it's not about creating sort of a. Uh, it's not about creating an advertisement. It's not about how you put up a poster or what is the content that you're building out. It's essentially how well you understand the consumer. It's it's essentially how well you market your product. So. coming from an tech background if a person can like i use my analytical reasoning or i use my analytical skills and then pivot it into the entire topic strategy world so talking from an mne perspective specifically so i think uh, shriram and mayur will also uh, agree to what i'm saying that especially in tv world it's it's hugely analytics driven like we have so many metrics as you have trp you have the number of viewers you have like you have you you talk it you tell me and you have n number of metrics coming in on a day to day basis which you have to track on a regular basis and you have to take decisions based on that so that analytical skill is something which will be very useful for a person who is coming from a tech background so that, that that's my take on this question thank you and um so i guess one more audience question is what does the typical day in your work days look like like we're very interested to know what does say somebody <laughs> what do you do in a day because that's a question i've been asking a lot of people as we as our cohort is getting closer to and i to placement season is i get the i get the description of the position but what do you actually do in a day so i think shriram if you could lead us through your day and then i will move on to every panelist I I I've been trying to give my boss a good answer for that question because she keeps asking me that regularly for the third and all day. No, it's a it's a very it's a mixed bag. Uh it's honestly a little difficult to define it which is what makes it fun because every day is a little different. Uh as far as speaking specifically from my perspective it is it's a, a what you're doing typically on a day to day basis is a combination of a lot of analytical uh work where you are looking at a lot of data like shori said there is a truck load of data available for us to analyze and build stories out of so it's it's a lot of analytical work where you're just looking at data and you're looking at strategy and you're trying to figure out what is the right way uh, you know to reach out to the consumer it's it's a lot of consumer work you are spending a lot of time talking to consumers or hiring research agencies to talk to consumers and understanding what they are watching why are they watching it and so on it's a lot of interactions with content people right at least as far as my role is concerned right uh, translating viewership data uh, across multiple platforms into content strategy so it involves a lot of uh, meetings with content people explaining to them how consumers are uh, you know behaving what do they like what do they not like uh, these conversations are not always pleasant uh, it's not it's, it's not always easy to get through to uh, to content guys because obviously uh, they have a very strong perspective on what they're making but it's exciting it's a lot of fun because you then get to shape what the content strategy is like right so it's and, and obviously there are uh, there is also a lot of uh, business planning uh, you have to make uh, pnl projections you have to make three or five year projections you have to have complicated conversations with the ceo and the top management you have to ask for budgets and you have to get new business plan sanctioned so there's a lot of that uh, as well so yeah so lots of excel lots of meetings lots of content lots of consumer that's great it's the perfect mix of uh, left side and right side as we said uh, yeah. my uh, my old what is your day look like typically so like i said right uh, as part of the growth acquisition team and as part of i think any growth team 
the objective is generally very metric driven right so for me like the two metrics which are my north star metrics are subs conversion where i get premium to uh, pay and become subscriber and second is getting them activated on the platform so they come i want them to watch videos so both tof and subscriber right so these are the two key result areas for me right so i think most of most part like better part of my day just goes in thinking about how to get these metrics to you know, move from x to y and when i say thinking it's just not like like i'm just not sitting and thinking it basically means that you have to understand what are the underlying metrics that are drive that will drive these overarching metrics right so you have three things for instance that will drive a uh, users to become vv from a so sorry i'm using these terms so basically a user who's coming to the platform is like an active user but when he converts to a video watching we call him like a video viewer and our objective is to get more and more of these guys to convert into vv so there will be like three or four underlying metrics which will drive this conversion one could be for instance for example availability of more content on the platform like volume wise one could be the communication in terms of what content is available discoverability could be better other could be that you know for uh, content that is uh, that the user has higher affinity towards that's present on the platform so a custom landing page that he has so there are several uh, ways in which you can influence a certain metric right so as part of my job i keep thinking about you know how what initiatives i can take on the platform and it's basically the initiatives that we can take on the platform in terms of uh, driving experiments in terms of making some product changes in terms of uh, communicating to the user via different uh, communication channels that how you can you know use different initiatives different channels to basically drive these metrics from x to y how you can grow uh, these metrics to whatever is your desired state so a bulk part of my job is basically to just you know just scape through the data look at trends try to understand what is working what is not working and then work with product and analytics team to understand how we can improve certain metrics and what other experiment and initiatives we can do to basically achieve the desired state so that's pretty much what i do all day that's the that, that actually sounds very interesting shaurya what about you so it's pretty much the same sort of a mix of what mayur and shriram said so of course shriram being on uh, one of the lead like he's the head of content strategy so not that much but yeah so i am currently working with the ceo's office so it's essentially assisting the ceo in taking the decisions and uh, so one of the major things that i do is keep looking at the industry trends which are going on keep looking at the competition so whatever mayur is doing i am going to track him you know <laughs> i'm tracking the ott changes that he is making and making a report about it so, so i'm just this jokes apart so essentially it's looking at the competitive landscape seeing that how you match up to your competitors are you lagging behind in certain metrics and then of course at a point in time you get certain requirements from the different teams like uh, i work very closely with the sales strategy and the marketing team so It, it, the problem can range from say we are not getting much of the revenue from Tamil Nadu market, or it can be say that youth is not consuming that much content. So it it can be X Y Z anything any problem that can come your way. So you essentially take it up uh, take it up as a case and go deep dive into it and create a solution and pitch it to the uh, relative uh, stakeholders that you have. Apart from that, one major part that you do and in in my role in corporate strategy that you create some take some new initiatives essentially. how can you uh, like what next so that is one big question that always keep there is always there with that what can we do next how can we maximize our profit can we you know create some new technology or can can we differentiate our ott offering in some way or the other can we add e sports on our can we add some short form video on our platform should we you know what what kind of an advertiser should we go out to just to maximize the profit so all these questions keep coming up that is something that you have to look at and then you have to drive some new initiatives and you create a sort of poc proof of concept and then you pitch it to the stakeholders and once it goes through you you run it for a while and then you hand it over to the respective team so that is something that corporate strategy in general does in all these media entertainment industries right and um, there was a very interesting audience question that came in right now was how do you strike a balance so that your creative side and business side are able to achieve the same goal have you had any instances where the two of them have clashed um open to the panel quite a lot <laughs> especially in media and entertainment industry it's it's quite a lot so i mean see the programming team when it comes when it's creating a content they have a 
some mindset like they have certain things in their mind and i i mean uh, i think shriram would be able to give you a better answer about it but there is a little bit of friction when it comes to you know numbers and the creativity so that is where you know, like that that's where the copy strategy you know that's where essentially the mba grads come into picture where you say that okay fine how do you balance it out you know how do you create a proposal that is that works for both of us or uh, in, in in one of the biggest challenges that i think that many industry faces on a regular basis is that how how can you say that this particular content that you're creating or this particular content that you are sending out to the audience how much of a viewership will it gather or will it do good will it not do good like there is no way of saying it right so you can create you can put a lot of budget in any xyz movie or any xyz web series it can do wonderful it can go flop as well so there's a bit of a challenge there and that 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 i think will always be there so the best you can do is look at analytics look at your strategy thinking look at uh, you know from different perspective and that's where all these numbers and all these metrics comes into picture and that's where all these huge uh, presentations and sort of strategic thinking comes into picture so that's that's a part of the job i think that would say thank you uh, mayul and i don't know what you mean by creativity i mean to solve any problem you need to be creative and particularly in a fast paced industry like ours like ours where you know things are evolving so quickly new and new kind of problems keep getting thrown at your face so i don't know what exactly that uh, the person means by creativity but you have to be really creative to think about some of the solutions because these are not something where any precedent exists you are actually carving a new way and it's like charting into an new territory where you don't know whether something will work or not so i don't know exactly what uh, it means yeah. that is if there is a clash in creativity or i think it has to be it has to go hand in hand if you really need to solve the problem right um uh, shriram uh, we were discussing about how you balance your creative sides and your business sides to achieve when, right. when you are making a decision and if right. there have been any instances where the two sides have clashed i think um if i may speak for the person who asked the question i believe creativity in terms of more the creative side of producing something writing something or ideating versus i think business creativity um, right. but we'd love to know what you think about it no i as a writer when i transition from you know writing to a, a you know a strategic career or a business career i realized that there is a lot more creativity in excel sheets and numbers right there are so many creative ways in which to spin a story from numbers uh, that it beats any kind of actual traditional creative writing but uh, no on a, on a on a slightly more serious note uh, see if if you're talking about creativity in terms of the traditional definition of creative storytelling in terms of writing or coming up with content or content ideas uh, uh, that's not really uh, what an mba grad does or what an isb that's not the that's not at the core of what you're doing i mean there are teams of specialists who are doing that so you could choose to transition into that kind in, into that team once you're in the media and entertainment business uh, but that's not really the core i mean that's an option you can, you can move to that but if you're talking about creativity in terms of uh, you know a broader definition of creativity in terms of creative problem solving uh, or taking creative leaps in terms of uh, understanding what a consumer need is there's plenty of that you you absolutely cannot operate only on data alone right uh, data is just one part of the story uh, you have to look at data you have to look at analytics but you have to just use analytics as a as a springboard for you to find a business solution or to find a content solution right or to find a consumer solution uh, so it's you, if you're only looking at analytics uh, uh, you know then you're probably not doing a great job because you have to take uh the job any job in the media business or for the matter any 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 business but i'm speaking specifically for media right now so any job in the media uh shriram you went on mute creative problem solving right uh i think we missed out on the your last sentence you went no, i was just saying that you uh, you have to balance analytics and creative problem solving analytics uh, is just going to give you the direction uh you have to then move forward with your own creative instincts right and um again this was a question that we had received previously to the session and it's open to all panelists but at isb what were some specializations or courses 
that you took that were maybe apart from the business analytics or finance courses that clearly we've gleaned are very important through this call. Um, what are some courses that you took or books, you magazines, podcasts you read um, that helped you make that transition and keep updated about the industry? Um, open to the panel. No, yeah, I'll just very briefly answer this because I was already from media, so I already was like kind of obvious. So I'm not the right person to answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, likewise, I, I was also from media. Uh, so I, 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 I didn't necessarily look at any specific courses that will tell me more about media. I mean, if anything, I was trying to do the opposite, right? I was trying to pick up some new information. But uh, the, the, the general area of uh, work or study in ISB that, that helped me in my career was a lot of uh, competitive strategy related courses that really helped me learn about how to think about other players in the business and how to think about what they are doing and then how to be, you know, uh, tune our own business to that. So competitive strategy was something that really helped me. I also ended up taking a lot of marketing courses. Uh, I think that also gave me a great insight into how to think about the consumer, right, and how to tune your business to what the consumer needs are, how to understand consumer needs and uh, you know how to work on that. So that's 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 more that's broader that applies to most industries, but coming from the background that I did, I think that's what helped me. Right. Um thank you. And I think Shaurya, I could see you getting ready to answer this question. So, uh... Well, I think Sriram pretty much covered it. So essentially marketing and leadership and strategy electives are, are really well suited for the job that we did. And I think uh, during in 2020, there was an elective course being offered in term eight, which was around the cinematography and you know cinema and media industry. So I, I don't really recall the exact name of that particular course, but it's there. So that, that also gives you a brief about how things run like essentially how, how the entire production thing happens and how do you pitch to the advertise. So it, it gives you a brief about it. I would say that data analytics courses are also very much helpful because you are going to go into a very data heavy industry. And if you are coming from outside of media and entertainment industry, and if you want to go learn about the media entertainment in general, I would recommend a couple of reports. So EY Ficky report, that is one of the sort of holy grail of media entertainment, especially in India. So they, they they bring out a yearly report on M &E industry. So that's that's a very very good and comprehensive report to get started about. And I think that that's it. Nothing but everything else you would learn through the course. So there's nothing very specific that you need to know. Absolutely, I think I can say five months into ISP, I've become quite the quite a different person. I learn something new every day, and it's incredible. Um, I think we want to get into some of the more admissions related questions now because um, that's also a big chunk that's on our audience's mind. And I'm going to ask the most controversial question first, Hyderabad or Mohali? And does it make a difference? Okay, I'll just answer it because I was in the placement committee <laughs> in 2020. <laughs> so no, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Uh, as far as I remember, we were told clearly that none of the companies, and this is a procedure I think all the companies coming to ISP also follow, they are never allowed to ask about your campus which you are coming out of. So from placement perspective, no differences whatsoever. And from education perspective also, I have been with people from Mohali, I, have, I, I, I was in Hyderabad of course. So th there, is, there is negligible difference, almost no difference whatsoever. So whether you go to Mohali or whether you go to Hyderabad, it's just a choice of the weather, <laughs> maybe the cuisine or the location, that's it. Nothing, nothing else matters here. Absolutely. Um, my, I think Mayul and Sriram would agree, but I should give them the chance to. No, no, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, I mean, you have to choose the, the, the only difference that the location makes is on your personal preference in terms of what part of the country you want to be in it i don't think it has any bearing so i'm speaking now from uh the employer's perspective right because i i was in hyderabad uh Mohali, the Mohali campus opened up the year after we graduated uh as an employer we have uh we, we don't have a preference between either of the two uh schools or either of the two locations it's the same across the board uh and uh, uh, you know like shaurya said 
our interaction with alums from uh, both of both both the branches have been equally good so i don't think there is any skew at all in terms of hiring between the two right okay cool and um, do you think that there is an advantage to people who come in from the media background already when it comes to admission given that there is this certain belief that ISB really likes diversity. And I agree to that belief absolutely because I call myself the diversity quota of the batch um, with my journalism and media background. But we have an incredible cohort this year of people from the Army, from the Navy, uh, people who work at your MVPs, people who've done marketing. There are so many entrepreneurs. So um, in terms of profiles, what were your experiences with the cohort in terms of the different kinds of people who came in? Um, Sri Ram, would you like to go? Yeah, so in terms of uh, my experience, I think I've already spoken about this before. Uh, one of the, the, the greatest things about my year in ISB was the peer group. Right, uh, was the, the kind of people that I got to interact with. I had pe I had I was, I was meeting people from all sorts of backgrounds, right? Right from people who came from FSB sales to automobile sales to the army and the navy, like you said. Uh, I was meeting consultants. I was meeting some people, you know, very rare, but I was meeting some people from the media and entertainment industry. Of course, fellow diversity members, uh, quota members. Uh, I knew uh, I, I I had a good friend who was. Uh, professionally employed in the business of uh, breaking down buildings, like his job was that his job was engineering collapses or breaking down buildings that need to be broken down and things like that. So it was a very very broad range, uh, not just in terms of uh, the professional background, but also in terms of the geography. Right, we had people from all over the world. Uh, so it was it, it it was a great experience that was to me that was one of the biggest takeaways uh, from my year in ISB uh, just meeting so many people from so many different backgrounds uh, working with them on projects and on course on, on, on the course material and uh, in general hanging out with them having existential conversations at all times of the day uh, and just picking up life lessons and not uh, apart from professional lessons so i think that was to me that is a big one of the biggest uh, value additions that ISB brings to me Absolutely. And uh, Mayur, what about you? Yeah, so uh, my manager at Star before I joined ISB, he is also an ISB guy. And, uh, you know, he told me that at ISB, he met some of the most amazing peers that one could imagine. And I think that was my biggest motivation to join ISB in the sense that I was really looking forward to meet diverse set of people because. Uh, I saw the value in that. So before that, you know, as, as an engineer and as an engineering student and as a consultant, the, your, the kind of people that you meet, of course, all of them are brilliant. And uh, I mean, nothing, not taking anything away from that, but it kind of limits your horizon. When you work at a company like Disney Star or Sony or any media company for that matter, you see that, you know, creativity and skillfulness comes from different, uh, you know, sections of workforce. It's not just like somebody who's very good at uh, one kind of thinking is going to drive everything. Every everybody comes from different spheres, and they you know they work towards driving something bigger. So I saw that value in Star, and that kind of also acted as a thrust in the sense that you know if this is the if the kind of diversity that's there at Star is so lucrative, imagine when you go to a place like ISB, which is even much more filtered and much more uh, niche that way, then you'll see people coming from Navy, from Army, just like you said, you know, so many different. So my motivation was that only, and, and I have to say that uh, yes, my whatever my expectation was, it was breached like more than hundred percent. Like I was so satisfied with my overall experience with meeting different people and just interacting with them. It's not it's not like I'm saying that I derive a tangible value out of that every time, but it's just that pleasure of interaction. You know, you don't get that opportunity anywhere else. I, I can safely so, say that. Yeah, just to add to that, like I was also uh, see, I was very apprehensive of getting into ISB, right? Because I was coming from a very non-traditional background and the diversity quota as as we all say right i was coming from a, uh, the media and entertainment industry and i was honestly very apprehensive about going to a b school because i thought all i will like i'll just meet i didn't know who i'd meet and how you know how i would cope with that uh and from that perspective it was one of uh, the greatest surprises in a way uh because i just uh met 
people from so many different backgrounds that it was just very very easy to get along with all of them we all had uh, very unique life experiences and uh, we came together and had shared life experiences and i think it was fantastic absolutely and um, so i think it's it's, it's it's the experience has been the same way across the different batches and like it, it is just a thing that you get to meet such kind of people which i had never imagined coming from an engineering background and then going into tech particularly so one of my body uh, one of my flatmates was a lawyer so and he had he had some really good experience in law firm so you know so and, and you never realize that until unless say you work on a problem statement so for example when we were working on a case study or something like that all of a sudden you will say okay fine this is something related to law let's call him up and so you you just have someone at 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 your you know at just a, you just need to call a person and you'll get all your answers and that is something that i found really amazing like we i had one of my batchmates was a stand up comedian like a professional stand up comedian so Uh, you know, a very different experience, and I, I learned how to essentially, you know, how do you command the stage? How do you do stand-up comedy? All these stuff. So we have stand-up comedy club in ISV right now, I think. Yeah, so all these things. So these are. It's not only about how well you hone up your analytical skills and how well you hone up your business skills. It's about it's about the all-around development which you get in ISV. Speaking with people from different industries, people people from fashion designing industry, people from sports industry. One of my friends was uh, he was what do you call it? Like he manages all these sports events that happens in the country. So he was doing that before joining ISP. So very very different experiences, very different sort of a learning coming from their their end. The way they tackle problem, the way they looked at the consumers, they the way they sort of went towards and pitched the idea. So it, it was a really good learning experience. So. That's always very nice, me, and I think that will always be there also. Absolutely, and I think one of the best parts of I is the people you meet here, mm-hmm. and they seem to be people you will go lifelong with. I mean, I'm very new; it's just been five months, but I know I've made some incredible friends, and I've had very, very interesting conversations. Um, I do think that we are almost at the end of this conversation. So I'd love if uh, we could go around once more and just last bits of sage advice for our uh, participants today. What should they do? How should they apply? What is what should they present to the school? Um, you know, to get the best chance of getting an admission. Um, and very honestly, if I I was I I was the most recent one of this, and I'd say just be your true self in your essays, and uh, you will get in. The school is incredible, the course is incredible, and the only way to ace the admissions process is just to be as as genuine and honest as you can be. But I will of course let um, the people who have done this before me and done it much better uh, give an answer to that. So Sri, maybe you can start off. So I, honestly, I was I was as surprised as anybody else when I got it when I got my when I got the email saying I'm in. So I I I I I don't really think I'm in the best of positions to tell somebody what is the best thing you can do to get it. But to a large extent, uh, I completely agree with you. Uh, you have to be yourself. You have to be as uh, I mean, maybe this perhaps sounds like a little bit of a cliche and sounds like something that is maybe easier said than done. But you do do not try to posture, right? Do not try to put up an image. uh because you have heard somebody say that this is what you should be and this is what I should be looking for and so on just be yourself uh that's one second just be as clear as possible with your thoughts right uh when you are when you are in the interview uh just try to be as simple as concise as possible uh they just want to know what you are thinking they don't they, they, they just want to get your perspective so just be as as, as easy as possible on that front and uh, try uh, try to have a clear reason or plan for why you want to get into us all right in my experience that is something that uh, the school looks for they want to know why are you getting it right what are you planning to do that doesn't necessarily mean having a five or a 10 year plan uh, that i don't think they're going to ask you the cliche question of where to see or some five years or 10 years from now that's not that's not what i'm getting at but you need to know why you want to get into us uh, you need to be clear about that that will really help yeah. um my my 
Yeah, I think any MBA course, and uh, especially a top uh, B school like ISB, I think there are. It's a, it's a two way thing. It's not just like you know. Okay, I, I'll summarize it in this way. Let's say somebody asks you, why do you want to join join ISB or anywhere, right? And if you if your answer is that you want to join ISB because it will help you better your profile, it will help you change industries, it will help you meet different people. Full stop. I don't think so. That cuts you above the right answer would be, and I'm not just saying from an answer perspective. I mean the right approach would be that yes, I am expecting certain sort of ISB, but the interviewer and everyone who's basically scrutinizing your profile, they should see value in you as well. As an as a candidate, they should see that you will be able to contribute something to the school as well, to to your peers as well. It should. It, it's not just a one way traffic. Right? It's two way street. So while any you know while writing your essays or while answering questions during interviews most of it is basically very conversation by the way it's not like a puzzle solving interview or something like that but it's basically whenever you are saying that you know you are expecting something out of the school it should not be just a one way thing it should also be that you know because you have certain qualities that you believe are also you know like something that drives you to do some uh, various things in your life that should also help in contributing and making the school a better school and not just you as a better person. I think that's the only philosophy that I've kind of taken away from uh, my interaction and from my uh, process with ISP. Absolutely. And um, Shorya, I think you you were the most recent on the panel after me. So, so I think what Sriram and Mayur have said that kind of covers the entirety of the, like whatever you need to do, they have already covered it. I would just say that, you know, just reiterate from the point that be true to yourself and what any admission committee is looking forward for is to look at your story, like who are you as a person or what are you bringing on the table? And your story can only be great and you can only write a good story when you are true to yourself. Like you can't copy it from anyone else. You can't go and Google on you know, and say, yeah, okay, what are the you know, main capabilities or whatever. No, you have to be true to yourself, look inside yourself, see what your achievements are, what, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses and present it in a way that sort of, you know, uh, that is helpful for the college. Essentially, how, are, how will you, as Mayu said, how will you be helping your peers advance in that one year? And what will you be taking from them or the college and such? So, and, and that has to tie up really well with what you have been doing till now and what your essence is, like what your characteristics are, what your weakness and strengths are, and where do you position yourself? post school. So if you have a clarity on all these aspects, then I think the application process will be very simple. And you have a trace needed. So no worries about that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you for taking out time. I hope that our audience enjoyed it and got the answers about the industry. Um, Ketan will be taking up all admission related questions now. And I will just like to hand it over back to him now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sheshuni, first of all, for moderating it in such an immaculate manner. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Shori, Mayul, and Sriram for answering and taking out time and being benign in answering the questions of uh, the attendees that we had here. Uh, in fact, I was listening to all the discussion in the background, and I learned a lot <laughs> about the industry and all those things that people need to do and how you people are coping up in the industry as of now. So yes, I mean, thank you very much uh, for taking out time to attend the session. Uh, you can please uh, uh, log off now if you wish. Uh, uh, there are some